Hey everyone, welcome back with the Fab Fatties. The episode you're about to listen to was our last episode filmed as a foursome. We are moving forward as a threesome and we're really excited for this next chapter. We wish Maria all of the best and please enjoy our episode all about Rebecca. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Four Fab Fatties. We are Allie, Maria, Rebecca, and Alyssa. And you guys, we are back with our series talking about another one of our favorite topics, Rebecca. <laughs> We're having you take a break this week. Just, just this week. Can't you know. always be about me. You know? can't, but you know, it should, it should be, right? <laughs> In Alex's world, it is. You know what? Everybody up here thinks that I'm fabulous. So. <laughs> she is, for our listeners, pointing to her brain. <laughs> we all think I'm a star. <laughs> oh, you guys, we were talking about Rebecca this week um, mm-hmm. because... They really did a number on me in my interview, so we're going to do the same to her. I can feel Rebecca's <laughs> nervous cringe anxiety is happening. just like slowly coming off of her in waves. Oh, man, she's going to do great. She, she thinks it's do... interesting. She's, she's like, <laughs> I find it's it interesting, interesting that I have to be here today. <laughs> that you guys keep asking me questions. <laughs> we have so many questions. We have so many questions for Rebecca. I did come with ten full questions. Oh, man. So I actually That's have, me alone. I have five. Ooh. So I don't know if we'll get to all of them today. We won't, but we won't. But I did come with some hits. We're, we're diving in. We're I diving know what I'm honestly Rebecca. most scared about the lightning round because that requires. Boom, 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 yeah, boom. but Allie didn't go that fast. Allie took her time in yeah, the lightning round. I, I appreciate I, the setup pace. A couple seconds pause. A couple seconds. It wasn't like I waited five minutes. I'd be like, play it back. We got it on tape. I got the tape. Okay. There were several seconds. It was not minutes. All okay. right. No, it wasn't minutes. Speaking of, lightning round, go. Okay. Um, um, Rebecca, <laughs> would you rather. Okay, wait. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Maria, no, go. she stressed me out. She stressed me out. I'm ready now. Okay. Would you rather one duck sized? <laughs> no, it's different. Okay, okay. Would you rather sneeze cheese or have spaghetti come out of your ears every time you sneeze? That's horrifying. I but mean, you know if you're what? not cheese, sneezing cheese, I'm not your friend anymore. Yeah, I want the spaghetti out of my ears. I feel like it would feel very what? relaxing getting the spaghetti out of my it ears. It might actually. But if it she would sneezes be a cheese, I can eat it. I am judging this so hardcore because honestly, my own personal like fondue machine with... A- <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So y'all want to benefit? Yes. Yes. Off of your... Off my I, mean, I mean, if you... Pa- have- I mean, I'm not going to be mad about pasta. Like, a never ending no. pasta. But, like pasta. Is it though? It we could don't be know that. Like like <laughs> 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 uh, I'm upset that now that I know that there was a cheese fondue on call <laughs> option, and now it's gone. But you picked a hundred ducks of a hundred duck horse sized si- ducks. Oh man, no. here we go. Okay. Uh, duck sized <laughs> horses. Stop listening. Alyssa, you please be a up sponsor. With this thing. Okay. <laughs> Listen, spaghetti is my choice. I know my that is, I'm okay. okay. You know go. So I'm ready. Go I'm ready. Go to first date. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, I'm really basic. It's a coffee shop. I like a coffee shop that has a little bakery, you know, Amelie's. Mm, we love some Amelie's. Yeah, I've gone to Amelie's multiple times now for first dates, and they tend to be decent first dates. The atmosphere is good. And if uh, the person pays for it, you get a free pastry. And the Perkentile. We go there too. Oh, yeah, there's a Perkentile in Concord, and that's like little baked goods, ice cream, and coffee. But yeah, I'm a coffee girl. I like it. I like that it's casual. I like that it can extend. Um, it may have extended to a dinner date the other day. Um, but <laughs> we're already talking about it. Yeah. On the pod. <laughs> if, you, if you are not into it, it's like, I gotta go do some errands. And I have all this energy because I'm all ho- yeah. hopped up on caffeine. See yeah. later. <laughs> I'll hop up on Mountain yeah. Dew. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with my hands? All right. Rebecca, favorite movie? You've Got Mail. Um, you've Got Mail with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. I love I you're explaining love it. it to us. <laughs> Listen, have you watched You've Got Mail? No. <gasps> oh my God. Set in New York. Oh. The fall scenes. And it's so freaking wholesome it's wholesome and big corporate but wholesome i was not expecting that i've loved it since i was a kid what a little lover girly i know okay Okay. and joe dirt (laughs) (laughs) what's the most what's the most random fact you know the most random fact about like life stuff that i know anything and literally anything that is a really wide fucking open question Um, answer it be something (laughs) with your job that people wouldn't know just random fact (laughs) <laughs> a penguin weighs 32.8 pounds 
That's not actually a fact. Mount Washington is um, 6,288 um, feet above sea level. You get mites in your eyelashes. Oh, why did you go with that one? <laughs> I thought about Allie putting a bunch of mascara on and then sleeping in it and the mites that are crawling on her eyelashes. I'm horrified. And why did that apply to me? She has all no, mascara. She all, has all mascara. Yeah, all mites. Mites. We all have mites. Your mites just have a lot to grab onto. Oh, okay. And they can stay the anyway, night. Okay. okay. With your Hogwarts house. <laughs> This feels pointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Hogwarts house is hu- us Hufflepuff. I feel like you're Slytherin right now. <laughs> <laughs> this, we all have mites. It just, okay, I we just gotta keep going. We can't, I can't emotionally handle it. I'm a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. I have I'm, enough issues. I, I used to think I was Ravenclaw because I am a little bit academic, but I am not the kind of academic that loves being the academic, so I am mm. a Hufflepuff. That's the other part of me is Hufflepuff. I can see that. Yeah. James is a Hufflepuff. Mm. All right. Um, so you must love me too. Best, but he does. No, you must love me too. Oh, you I love do a love party, you. Yeah, I do love you. We're back after mites. We had to get back there. Okay. <sighs> We're still on thin ice with the mites. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to know the best book you read in the last year. Um, Nine Perfect Strangers. Cannot remember the name of the writer, but I liked it enough to like want to talk about it with people okay. and to go watch the show that's on Hulu for it. It stuck with me. The people in the book um, do some psychedelics, and I also was kind of like, hmm, uh, not going to do them, Mom. Um, but like it made me curious <laughs> about how people do them for trauma therapy. Did you read it? I listened to it on okay. audiobook. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. That's how I okay, read. Can we just have that debate really quickly for all of our for our viewers and our listeners? I tell us in the comments. We just need I to mean, pull it's a know. good argument. It I'm is. not gonna and lie. I, I am very much on that. Like you can't. I'm just not like a. I'm not a hard stance on you can't say you didn't read something you, that you read something like if you say that you read the book but you listen to it i'm not gonna get angry about it oh i'm not angry i feel like you i'm just, just judging you. About it. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not angry i'm You're just, just wrong i'm just yeah. judging you okay but i do recognize that there's a difference because you can't like you you can't read a book while you're driving right, right? whereas i listen to a book all the way here yeah favorite podcast this one um uh... <laughs> If you don't say ours, I'm oh, leaving. Okay, <laughs> ours. Yeah. Ours. Okay, ours. Okay, ours. That's not ours. <laughs> um, do we know them? Podcast. I actually watch it on YouTube, but I like to follow all like the social. Me- I, I like to follow social media personalities, and they talk about what the personalities are doing and kind of like weird stuff that's happening on TikTok. Maybe one day they'll talk about us. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, but they usually cover mess. So ma- hopefully not us. Oh. <laughs> but I want I them to like said us. Mess. Oh no, mess. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. You're listening to podcasts about meth. Mm-hmm. All right. Is that the lightning round? Do you feel good about the lightning round? I got another one if we want to keep going. Go for it. One more. Okay, one more. Okay. One more. Uh, what is your most ridiculous fear? My most ridiculous fear? Um, heights. I mean, it's not ridiculous, but like I struggled to go down like a water slide when I was a child. And actually this past summer, I went to the water park at Carowinds and I went down the water slide that's meant for uh, five-year-olds. And it was decently high like like you know from like a second floor That's story scary. and i was proud of myself I'm for going in. and then i liked it and i went down multiple times and i didn't shove any five-year-olds out of place like i stood in line <laughs> that was so kind of you rebecca with her little like in line like, yes. <laughs> and some of them would be like do you have any kids here like they would talk to me and i was like no i'm here with my nephew <laughs> i made friends in line <laughs> oh my god oh, okay man. well now we're going to get into our general questions mm-hmm. before we get into our Rebecca specific questions. Um, so my first general question for you is, can you pinpoint, can you pinpoint for us, leave that in there. Absolutely. <laughs> can you pinpoint for us when or where or how or a combination of any of them, your journey towards body acceptance, fat joy, mm-hmm. all the things started? Yeah. Um, so it was when I was 22. So just for reference, I'm 36 now. So uh, when I was 22, I was graduating from over college. Over a decade ago. Yeah, over a decade. And um, I needed to get a graduation dress. And I had gone to school in like a rural mountain area. And I came to Charlotte. And I went to Macy's. And I found the plus size section. And I found a cute dress. Um, and I was like, oh, I actually like what I'm wearing. This is cool. And I Googled it. And what I found was plus size bloggers. So this was pre-Instagram. 
pre-Instagram, it was people were using Twitter to connect and people had blogs and they would link to each other. And I found plus size bloggers recording their outfits of the day. And within two months of finding them, I started my own blog. Um, so yeah. I'd like dove in deep as a reader and commenter and like I was spending all day because they would all link to each other. So I was just like finding new people all day long. And that was the start of me getting into that space. I love that. Seeing just confident women. Mm -hmm. For the people who don't know, can you tell us a little about about just like your background in the blogging industry or like even on Insta and all that? Yeah, sure. So I started my blog back in 2010 um, called The Plus Side of Me. So I made up that name when I was 22 and it's. It stuck. I actually thought about changing it a few years back and I put on my stories and people like, no, <laughs> we know you as a plus side of me. It's too late. <laughs> um, and and so I've seen a big change. You know, it started as everyone self-hosting on their blogs. This was before brands did any kind of brand working with bloggers type thing. Um, we did a lot of challenges. It'd be like everyone on Friday post a post a outfit wearing blue, post an outfit wearing stripes. And we'd all link <laughs> to each other. And it was really a lot of um, British bloggers and American bloggers. So it was across the pond, a lot of connections back and forth. Whereas now it really seems like they all kind of like stay in their space. Like I don't notice as many British bloggers. I see a lot of American people on Instagram, um, although I know they exist. I just less connection back and forth. Um, so, yeah, I started with blogging, started with personal blogging. And then within two years of doing that, I went to what's called Full Figured Fashion Week, which was an event they used to do in New York. It was one of the first big plus size fashion events. It's the first time I met some of the brands. It's the first time I met Eloquy when Eloquy was new. I was here before Eloquy. <laughs> <laughs> I died in my grades this week. <laughs> um, and, um, and I got to meet like some models and stuff that were really popular at that time. Got to meet bloggers who became really popular. So one of the first bloggers I met was Gabby Fresh, who oh. now is like kind of seen as one of the OGs. She's had a lot of clothing line deals. She's actually she coming out with her like very perfect, own. Fat yeah, she invented the fat kini mm -hmm. and she's actually coming out with her very own independently owned swimwear line this week. I um, buy all of yeah. it. Wait, really? She yeah. is. I didn't finally. See that. Finally. Yeah. Just, she was with, she put out with. Fashion to Figure first, mm -hmm. and then she put out with Swimsuits for All. Which Fashion to Figure Swimsuits for All is not doing great. They're gone now. Yeah. Like officially, officially done? Officially gone now. Offline and then she too? Did, yes. Wow. She, she did a line with Eloquy too. But yeah, now and she's she had finally... her own line for a while with her friend Nicolette Mason, who actually mentioned in the last oh, episode. Right. Yeah, 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 They had a line. Um, and so, yeah. So she's been doing her thing for a while. And, you know, a lot of people I met when I first started no longer are active. You know, they're off doing other stuff now. But there's plenty of people who are still active. Um, and so it's been interesting to see things change and, and kind of the media change. It went from blogging and everyone writing to Instagram to video content. And now, you know, a lot of the content is monetized content, you know? And so, sure. um, now I like the things I love most is watching people's stories. Cause that's more of like their day to day stuff, yeah. you know? So I like stories. I like people vlogging on YouTube. And so that's what I tend to also post the most of. Yeah. yeah. I think the only thing we didn't touch on is like your why to that though. Like, why did you feel the need to jump into that space and be more involved oh, yeah well I mean at the time at 22 I literally did not have any fat friends um the family members I had that were fat were all trying to lose weight being fat you know they weren't interested in the fashion I didn't think I was interested in fashion until I got into that and so it's like it's like seeing a bunch of people do this really cool fun activity uh, I, I want to do the activity as yeah. well right mm -hmm. and it felt yeah. very inviting like it felt like there was a space for more and more people there um, and it wasn't competitive. It was very communal. Um, come join this challenge. Come do this. You know, we're going to link to everyone who says they want to participate in this week. You know, so it was very communal. We were literally on Twitter talking all the time. And I forget, there was one time, I don't know if it was City Chic. There was some brand that did this like massive sale for the first time. We were all on Twitter just tweeting, oh, I'm going to buy this. Like it was like the <laughs> online shopping with your friends. Like we just went that. wild. Um and so it was it was very much like chat space, you know, like people were responding in real time and talking in real time. And That's it was so fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. I don't really have any super general questions. I kind of went some for some Rebecca questions. Let's go. Let's and, do it. And I did keep them a secret from I Rebecca. I mean, I think we kind of already dove into her because I feel like that's where it's headed anyway. Let's just do it. Let's deep dive. Something I find really interesting um, and not in the way that I <laughs> like I actually find it interesting is 
is you you are ex- very guarded and you like mm. talk about having a wall up. And I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. I know I can relate to it. But what I find so interesting is from an outside point of view, your wall looks like it serves a different purpose than mine. So what I really want to know is why do you have a wall? Mm -hmm. When did it start? And Mm -hmm. why do you keep it so intact? Welcome to your therapy session. (laughs) Yeah. Well, now I'm like, what's my wall look like to you? Um, (laughs) Well, I think, I think your wall is external. Like Mm -hmm. Billy, Billy, my husband met you the first time and he went, Rebecca's cool, but she's very guarded. Mm -hmm. Like it's very apparent versus I have a wall up, but most of the time people don't realize. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, like I get called out on that in therapy, right? Like I, I like f- people don't realize that there's like a disconnect. Okay. Versus, I think you don't hide it, which is I'm not judging. No, you're it's fine. Just, I'm waiting to see when <laughs> when the answer. <laughs> sorry. No, I was like about to answer. I'm like, no, her idea's not done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. No, please answer. Um, it's interesting because uh, I would say you know, in high school, yeah, it's interesting. Um, in high school. Um, one of the first things I remember being told about myself from a girl who was newer to the school was that she thought I was a cold bitch until oh. she got to know me better. And I've always kind of felt like I come off as cold to people. Um, and whether that is guarded, whatever, um, I do think that tends to be an interpretation that I get. I also think people feel like I'm too polished and so like they can't be not polished near me. Like that's that's an awareness I have of how some people view me. Um which is funny because I find myself attracted to people who are not polished. Uh, maybe because this I then, is true, yeah. then I can like be myself around them. Um, you know, I don't know exactly how to articulate what my wall is and when it started, except for that it probably started pretty young. And I think most of it started with the fact, and, and this is something I struggle with, is once I'm let down by someone, it is hard for me to realize that as one day, Mm. not um just the fact that they actually don't fully care for care or consider me um and so you know i i think there's very few people we just talked about did we talk about my standards you said my something about my standards about how things are you said something a minute ago uh this might have been beforehand about when you're going to start the episode like i don't know if i can get rebecca's standard of when I things did. are going to start before we started <laughs> yeah. recording i i do think i have high standards you do and that's okay I recognize that people aren't perfect and they're not going to always do the thing that I expect and or think that they should treat me that way it is hard for me to accept whenever I feel like someone does something towards me or says something to me that I'm not expecting or I wouldn't say towards them and I get really wounded by it so as much as like I say I don't feel. The problem is actually that I'm very sensitive. Yeah. And I'm empathetic. And I tend to find that I am thinking of other people. And so when I don't feel like I'm thought of, wall. Mm. Um, and I don't think many people think of me. I don't think many people think of me. I think for most people in my life, whether it's at work or my family, whatever, I think most people interpret me as capable and not needing of help or support about you all the time well thank you and so I think that I often don't get someone checking in on me or I might feel capable of being like I'll step in here but no one's like but when do you need rest you know like Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I get a lot of people that are actually looking in on that and part of that is like I've lived alone for over 10 years and like who's checking in on me there's been times I'm like I could die in my apartment and no one would know for multiple days. Not right now because we do too much damn stuff. Like, y'all would know. <laughs> I would know within a couple yeah, hours. We would know within yeah. a couple be hours. Like, why like, is Rebecca uh, not in any of our Not in chats. any of our 10 yeah. group chats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I think at part of it's just like dynamics. Like, my mom knows I say it. My mom waits for me to go to her. Mm. My sister waits for me to go to her. I go, I for the most part go to all my friends' houses. I go to my siblings' houses. People don't come to me. And so I I feel a lot of that. And I'm like, well, I would like it back. I don't always ask for it. Okay, can't do magical thinking, right? But I, I do think there's a sense of like, who's taking care of me? 
who's taking care of me. And I don't trust many people to do it beyond a little scope that I allow them to. Yeah. And so that's the wall. The wall is I got to take care of myself. And so if anyone else does something that's not taking care of me, well, who's going to take care of me best? Me. I'm going to buy my own flowers. I'm going to do whatever. <laughs> Can I, I, sorry, with the wall, mm -hmm. do you talk to the wall? Do you have conversations with the wall? Uh, no. You don't? I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We will get into that on your episode. <laughs> no, we will. <laughs> I'd love to know I, what those conversations look like. If, if talking to the wall means something happens and I'm like, they got other fish to fry right now. They're not thinking of this impact on me. Yeah. I talked myself down from taking it personally. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, talk to the wall as in, like, like, oh, I need a to wall. feel... <laughs> no i don't mean like sitting down can you for care for me today wall. but i think i i think <clears throat> i think are you there while it's me rebecca <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's I an crack myself up i don't think it's an unusual thought to be like oh i'm not feeling safe in this environment so i'm gonna be extra guarded or you know mm -hmm. so and so did this last time so like yeah, well, is the is the wall in place? Like, I I feel like it's not weird to have like yeah. internal check ins to be like, can I handle this? And I'll say this, and this happens to me in dating a lot. I don't feel like I meet people who are good enough to know me, and that seems very egotistical. But like, I literally mean morality wise. Yeah. Do there are there values in a place where I feel good with them getting to know me? That's why my <laughs> circles are small. Do I feel like they're a caring person? You know. Y'all are in my circle, so don't feel excluded from that. Y'all yeah. are in my circle. That means I do feel this with you. But uh, dating-wise, <clears throat> yikes. Like, yikes. I, I don't feel like most people have values that hold up to the values I expect to be treated with. Well, I do. And I do think that with having a high level of empathy and having a high level of being self-aware enough to say, hey, I'm a very sensitive person, you do – people like that do tend to be a very good – judge of character. I'm not saying that you prejudge people. Maybe you do a little bit, but I, I think that you're a very good read. You, you read people very well. You, 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 you get a good read on people. And I think that you have, I noticed that you have some of those, like those instincts, right. That you, that you feel like, Ooh, I don't know. Right. And you, and you listen to yourself. And I think that you you got to give yourself credit for that instead of like, oh, that makes me hard to date or whatever. Like, you got to give yourself credit for that because you listen to yourself and you trust yourself and you trust your own voice. And not everybody does that. Yeah. So, like, okay, like, so, for example, with the Billy, in, uh, the Billy example, right? Oh, oh, oh Rebecca's guarded. Um, <clears throat> that, that means I have not decided that Billy gets to know me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not that against Billy, but that's how I am in life. Yeah. Like I haven't decided that person gets to know me and it takes a minute for me to decide. What in your life created that process? Uh, probably negative friendships, like probably negative friendships. Um, Anything in particular like stand out for like, oh, I was wronged. Hmm. There's definitely been things that affected the way I see friendships. Um, you know, I had a really bad falling out with one of my closest high school friends. We went in room together in college. They tell you not to do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Um, uh, but even then, like, that was probably my first instance of really feeling disrespected by someone. Um, she like threw up on my bed. She had people oh. eating and smoking cigarettes in my bed. It was just like trying basically yeah. to push me. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I... I don't know that there's any one singular event that has caused that, except for that it's definitely been a culmination of my experiences. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? I feel like there were five over there. <laughs> I was just really interested about the wall. <laughs> All right. Make a note. We need to talk to Alyssa about her wall. I feel like I need to like put some little string lights on my wall. <laughs> you can. Put a little welcome mat on my wall. And you can start looking like it. the wall from Stranger Things. I'll have a little checklist. To you can check out, like, do you meet this checklist? Then we can touch the wall we got <laughs> <laughs> my emotional support wall um gosh now I'm like <laughs> now i've like lost where like i wanted to go with all of that um but i think i do know um kind of with i guess in that same spirit i'm wondering if there's any part of you that has this like 
is there any kind of fear that if you do start to feel your feelings and feel your emotions and let it out, that it's just, you're not going to stop? Yeah, it's interesting because y'all have said that about therapy. I really don't know if that'll be me. Like, I realize people process differently. Mm -hmm. I realize it. Um, it's funny because the only time I can remember being so emotional in the last year was when I got broken up with in April of last year. And it was a blind side. So yeah. that caught me off guard. Um, and there was a time before, like a couple weeks before that, where he had done something that really upset me. And I was crying. I was like, I think I told you, like, I was driving while crying. Like, it was, like, one of the worst cries I'd had. <laughs> and and yet I do stop at some point. <laughs> like, like I, 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 I feel the feeling. I cried. I got it out. And it took a while. But I will say the emotions with him took the longest for me to get over. Sure. Um, and they're probably part of it is because I felt wronged by him. Mm. Um, I felt manipulated. I felt blindsided and tricked. Um, and I tend to get mad because then I get mad at myself because I think you knew you knew some of this was wrong. You could have made the call. You didn't. You believed what he said. You let yourself get tricked. That wasn't your fault. And so a lot of it's like me thinking I did something to contribute and then walking myself back from yeah. my level of responsibility for dealing with it. Like he he still lied to me. Like what, what am I supposed to do? Right. Yeah. People's behaviors. I can't control them. Yeah. Um, and so. I don't I don't know that I feel like once I feel them because I feel like I do feel them. I just feel them in a way that's very different than how y'all feel them. Sure. Uh, mostly because I'm not a crier. But I know. maybe and I am I a only, crier. I know. I, well, no, I only I only well, ask yeah. that. <clears throat> I have days where I cry. It's just right. I don't cry easily. It has to be a really big event for me to cry. And I only ask that because I was very much like that for a very long time. Like nothing made me cry. I would joke like unless unless a dog died in a movie you could not get me to cry like i didn't like if a lady died like i can't like nothing like unless it was marley and me i was not crying mm -hmm. nothing now commercials make me cry Alyssa makes me cry everything makes me cry like it's like oh, don't i know it for me it was like as soon as like i started like allowing myself to feel those things mm -hmm. so i was just curious and i wonder if there's like no any idea. kind of barrier that we just need to break for you <laughs> chip chip and chip. i'm on that mission yeah i mean who knows because I've, I've never been to therapy y'all are convincing me of it um i have a question about it i'm poor oh my god Alyssa, wait your turn <laughs> i'm sorry but i literally have a question about sure go ahead is there is there reluctance to go to therapy not so much reluctance it's i have to do the process like i have to go find the therapist i had to yeah. pay for it what am i going to say like i do have a couple things that are happening in life that i could talk through but it seems like most of the most of the stuff that I feel like I want to talk about is more so because I see the way y'all talk about things. And I'm like, why am I not having those conversations? Right. Um, and I also know that I don't have to be like y'all, you know, but there are a certain extent like, OK, is something wrong with me because I'm not doing these things. I'm not feeling those emotions. Girl, someone would argue that it's the other way around and that there's <laughs> nothing wrong with you. Well, and I was going to say, like in, in the conversations that we have together, I feel like you are kind of already on that playing field of being able to engage in those conversations and and have those thoughts think through walk yourself through those things that you that you've mentioned about us right that we're able to walk ourselves through things i feel like you're able to do that and and maybe it's you know I, I therapy like is not for everybody it's not i think i think a there's a lot of childhood stuff i've never talked about i'd be interested in diving into I and there's also, about that today. <laughs> there's also, there's also, I think, hear <laughs> the laugh. as someone who's by themselves a lot, where I could improve is, is very much so communication with others, but also managing the disappointment, right? Like, cause like disappointment doesn't have to mean I have to take 10 steps back. Right. But I'm like, if you can't give me this, I got to take a step back cause I can't need you. I can't need you. Right. So that is something I like to work on. Like, okay, that doesn't have to mean that. What does that look like then? I just think that you're so immensely self-aware. And like, it's just something that I just admire so much That's about you. That's what gives you. me anxiety. It, it's I'm too self-aware of myself. It, honestly, <laughs> it, it is not the most fun thing in the world to be. I did. I one day walked into therapy and I was like, She's like, what do you want to talk about today? And I was like, I'm just so fucking tired of myself. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of myself. And I get that. But I yeah. do. I think that you're so self-aware. And I just love that about you. I love that about you. So I, I, 
I, I know that we joke about it. I don't know that like, you know, talk therapy isn't for, I do think that some kind of therapy is for everybody. I don't know that talk therapy is for everybody. Maybe this is your therapy, you know, but I do, I think you need to give yourself credit. This is therapy though, because my therapist told me that I should pull back because I'm doing a lot of therapy and but she you know this therapy. therapy a little bit differently than me. I think, sure. sure. I think, I think sure. it's worth a shot for me to like talk to a professional. Yeah. Because as much as I've sat and there's in therapy, absolutely, I'm not there, The thing I probably need to talk about is like there are certain areas of my life I avoid, you know, and like that's probably the number one thing I need to deal with is the areas I avoid. But there's all this other stuff that I'm interested in kind of working through. Yeah. yeah. You often call yourself a little alien, mm -hmm. which I fully believe because you are out of this world. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but the that real question is, so so she's so cute. She just flirted <laughs> with you. Oh, that made me giggle when I read it. Oh, my God. So related to being an alien, though, mm -hmm. do you think that your experience as a fat woman has shaped this idea? Since our bodies are often the topic of unwanted discussion, and we're often mm -hmm. kind of seen as like, you know, not so secret laboratory you know, mm -hmm. patients like with Ozempic and all these other weight loss drugs that they're just like kind of unsure about but they're just like trying like little it. experiment <laughs> bodies yeah mm, so little do you rats. think that your experience as an alien <laughs> quotes relates to that at all it's hard for me to separate my fat body from myself at all because I was fat so young um I've always felt a little bit different personality wise than other people. I've always felt a little bit different humor wise. I am a more serious person than a lot of people. <laughs> um, and so I, I feel like I'm a little bit alien in every way um, in my preferences, like in my choices for life, all, all things feel a little bit off the beat, even though I know I'm really not that far off the beat, just, you know, one little <laughs> beat off. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, for sure. For sure, my body has contributed to that. You know, there's, I, I can't remember if I've already shared this or not, but whenever I was young and we'd go um, cruising down the road in Hickory, North Carolina, we'd cruise up and down US 70 and we'd wave <laughs> at boys and we'd pull over and talk to them. <laughs> I was often the driver, so I've often been the mom figure, okay? And we'd pull over and the guys would ask my friends' names and they wouldn't ask my name. And there'd be no indication that I was there. I was just kind of like in the background, just invisible. Yeah. Um, so almost an invisible alien, mm -hmm. you know, but but definitely not one of, not one of the peer groups. I always felt like the stuff that they were doing wasn't for me. And we talked about that in, in some other episodes. But yeah, like like a lot of the stuff that is normal life experiences wasn't for me. And I think as an adult, a lot of my like things that I find to be like giving me drive in life is doing the things that I thought wasn't for me. And, and now mm. they're for me. I'm like, mm, I'm going to do these things. I went, never went to camp as a kid. I was very scared of that. Went to camp twice as an adult. Like I want to go do the things that I used to think weren't for me. Yeah. I love that. All right, Alyssa. I'm going to have an alien baby one day. <laughs> one question, Alyssa. No, I felt like I, I held the floor. I was going to step back a little bit and let you guys keep going. <laughs> Truly go for it. Um, I feel like I have kind of a hard question for you. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, um, okay. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're so, not going to break me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so you are, you, you have labeled yourself and, and you've talked about this freely before, but you are our 27 year old virgin. Yeah. Now 36 year old, not virgin. But now 36 year old, not virgin. <laughs> Can you clear my name? <laughs> she, did, she did stuff mm -hmm. last night. She's like, I have <laughs> sex now. <laughs> um, do you think I, now, I know one. that we <laughs> I know, you know, I know that we've talked about, you know, there being, you know, part of your your fat experience, obviously being being part of that, but mm -hmm. is there anything that that happened earlier in life that may have contributed to you uh to your sexuality to uh, or or lack thereof um maybe that's not the right term but um to maybe being uh a late bloomer air quotes or mm -hmm. maybe holding off or or, yeah. or whatever led to you holding on to that until you were 27 yeah is there anything yeah um and, and one of the things that Ali talked about in her episode made me think of this memory, kind of like unlocked it for me. I'm, I remember it, but oftentimes what I tell people about this experience is um, in the eighth grade, I had my first-ish 
um, I'm going to say first consensual sexual experience. We'll say it okay. that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and trigger warning, this is like really young. This is an experience I had that was kind of messed up. Um, and when I talk about that experience, I talk about the fact that after that it happened, I got shamed thoroughly in the eighth grade and everyone talked about it. Everyone knew about it. I only had a couple friends that like literally were like, LOL, you're still the same. Like I had very few people that did that for me. Um, and I talk about the shame part that came from people knowing about it. But what I realized is I've never told a single soul what actually happened. And will you tell us? I will. And we'll see it. We'll see how weird it feels to tell people this. I mean, okay. I've literally never told a single soul, you know. Um, so in the eighth grade, I I did experiment. Like I had some friends who experimented with like drinking and things like that. And this one girl, her parents always went out of town and she was not a responsible girl and they never got her babysitter. I don't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> but I found myself staying the night at her house and we were drinking and she had talked to these guys that were in high school. I want to say they were three years older than me. So I don't know how old I'm in eighth grade, 13, 13 ish. Yeah. 13, um, 14. So these guys were probably three or, so, or more years older than us. And it was a guy and her, his friend. And the one guy liked her and the friend was there. And the expectation was, well, this is my friend and that's your friend. Y'all go do something together. Mm. Um, and I had never been kissed. I had never been kissed. And um, we drank. It was very weirdly like sexual in front of me, the others. And I was not interested in the guy, but it was kind of like, you're here for me. So come into the room with me. And I remember he wanted me to give him oral. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've never even been kissed. He's like, well, come here. And he just like, kissed me really quick um, to get it over with. But anyways, I proceeded to follow directions, we'll just say. And midway through that, um, he called out for the girl that was my friend. And she came into the room and he was basically like, I'm getting soft. Show me your body. And, oh, oh shit, I might cry, actually. Oh, Rebecca. Show me your body. And she did. And I don't really remember much else after that, except for that the next morning I was trying to feel okay. I was trying to feel like my world was normal. And the boys had left. And this is back when phones had cords attached to things. And some of her other friend called. And we were on the phone with her and I needed to go pee. So I left to go into the bathroom. And in the bathroom, there was a phone on the wall. And I picked it up to start listening in. And she was telling the friend. Oh, shit. It's okay. Yeah, him and Becky were doing X, Y, Z. But, like, it was so gross to him that he needed to see me. And he wanted to touch me. Because he couldn't keep it hard for her. And I had originally planned to pick up the phone and actually talk in the conversation. But I heard them talking about me. And I just felt so fucking, like, disgusting. (laughs) And then afterwards, it spread like wildfire that I gave a BJ to everyone in eighth grade. And I'm like, a BJ that he didn't want, that I didn't really want to give, that I was not sexy enough to give, that I made him soft, that all these things. And I never wanted a man to touch me after that. And specifically, I never wanted him to see my privates. Uh, that sounds weird. But like I as, as an older girl, I would give and I would not allow someone to touch me because I felt like I must be ugly down there like that my private parts were untouchable people cannot look at them it's like monstrosity um it really wasn't until I was much older that I was like my parts looked like other people's parts (laughs) um but I just felt like my body was the opposite of attractive it actually was repulsive and yeah I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, I would like names and social security numbers because mm. I will find them. And in high school, I would see him in the hallways when I finally got him there, like to ninth grade and such. 
And, and yeah, it was really awkward. And it was, he was like, just a reminder that like, I, I was there to please him because I was a friend, but also I didn't because I was ugly and fat. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Fuck. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like don't. I like don't know what to say. I like. There's been a couple experiences where I feel like I've been so violated sexually. Some of them more recent, some of them older. Um, that to be able to like be in a sexual space with someone isn't easy for me. It's really weird because sometimes I'm like, is it too easy for me sometimes? Because like, <laughs> I'm like, am I detaching? And that's why it's easy for me in this moment, you know? Um. But, like, I really have to be approached the right way because I've had so many people do wrong things to me. Um, one experience, this was when I was much older, and it really did make me not want to have sex for a very long time afterwards, is I was I was seeing a guy that I was talking to, and he, I didn't realize he had recorded me on his cell phone without getting permission. And when I turn around I was like oh my gosh don't get my face like I, when I realized like oh my gosh don't get my face he's like ha, don't get your face I got your whole body blah, blah, blah. and I was like trying to like process it because I had sent him sexy pictures but that's my consent like I chose to give right, him that right? right and um he did it a second time and at that point I was like mad at myself again because like why did I stay longer than I'd had you know um but he told me it was my anxiety that my anxiety ruined our relationship. So sometimes when people are like, your anxiety is doing X, Y, Z, I get real defensive. That's not your fault. Because I feel like my anxiety protects me. My anxiety does. voices anxiety. what feels wrong to and me. And you listen to it. No, no, but like anxiety's function mm -hmm. is a protector. Yeah. Just like fear is. Mm -hmm. Like the actual function of that emotion, mm -hmm. right? Anxiety, Think. let's just think about it in like the easiest term you get anxious for a test the anxiety is there because you want to perform well yeah right it's serving a purpose mm -hmm. so yeah saying that anxiety is protecting you that's not a, that's not a wild thought yeah i think i think it's why i struggle like whenever guys do say a lot of like good things about my body or bad things like i just feel so bleh, numb okay it serves you cool it doesn't serve you cool like it just doesn't feel good and so that it took me a long time to like well what can feel good with my body if all the way people process and talk and, and all that doesn't feel good right um so yeah that's been an exploration as an adult is how can i make it feel good if i hate the way people talk about my body <laughs> you know how does it feel to have told that story it feels freeing I kind of wish I could have cried <laughs> and maybe if I had told y'all and I wouldn't have been on camera maybe I could have cried with you yeah. because there's a little bit of like I can feel it on my back and I want to release it yeah. and I feel like if I cried it could have released it but like I'm doing a little deep sigh that's releasing some <laughs> of it but it doesn't feel fully relief released yet you know um, like, I want to cry with you right now. <laughs> Marie's like already. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could have cried. I wish I could have released it. But I probably wouldn't be able to cry unless I was by myself about it. Yeah. And it's been on my mind since we filmed your episode, you know, that moment. And, and thinking about the fact that I've always shortened it to I got shamed in eighth grade for doing something sexual. But I didn't say what actually was the damaging part of it. Yeah. Like, people knowing I did a BJ, whatever. Yeah. Quite frankly. The other stuff was a much more that hurt. Yeah. I'm so sorry that happened to you. You can. Fuck. Mm. I'm so sorry that happened to you. It feels weird because it's <laughs> like that that person it happened to is so far removed. Yeah. I get that. But that is that little girl inside of you. It though. is. It's like, okay, how did I go from that to this? You know? 
but it it does make dating complicated for me. It does make even when girls talk about what's hot or not complicated for me. And to protect myself, I try to shield. Like I try to be like, that's their thoughts, separate from me, separate from me. Doesn't have to touch me. Um, and I and I do wonder, like, I do wonder if I can get there. Like, I think that's what I struggle with is can I get there in terms of really trusting somebody? Yeah. Um, because I I trust to a, a level I'm comfortable with, and I trust some people way more than others. But there's a fear I have, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And always. I'm just so angry right now. Yeah. Like, the little girl in me is so sad for the little girl in you. Because I'm like, I would have been your friend. And I, like, never would have put you in that situation or that scenario. I'm so angry that that friend, quote unquote, did that to you and thought it was okay. And thought that that's how you're supposed to treat somebody in general, let alone somebody that you're close with. And see, I can't even be mad at her. I can't even be mad at her. I'm mad at her. Because I I know she had a shitty life. I don't care. That's no excuse to pass it on. And I feel I can feel for her and I'm I empathize for her too. But what she did with you isn't right. And for her to put any question on your body or to make you feel anything about yourself because of what happened to her is wrong. And I know hurt people hurt people, but that doesn't make it any better. And you deserve so much more. Thank you. I think part of it is like me knowing that I wasn't supposed to hear that conversation. Mm. Yeah. And so like, you know, what what do people Not, talk about? It was a about shitty situation yeah. anyway. And yeah. then to sit there and say those things behind your back. Yeah, like I just had probably the weirdest night of my life where I did yeah. things that weren't normal to me, right? And I wanted to feel normal. That with you my didn't want to do anyway. Yeah. That you weren't really necessarily and when comfortable I drank, with. It, like I was drinking. I you know, there was, it was a mess, you know. It was sexual assault. And and I wish I had had a friend, but also I recognize and this is the the trust. Did I tell anyone? No. Mm. Didn't tell my sister, who I love. Didn't tell my mom. Didn't tell a single friend. Didn't tell anyone until I was 36 years old in this room. But honestly, why would you? The people who were there, who should have been there for you in the moment, weren't. Your friend, who should have stuck up for you in the moment, was too busy thinking about herself and how how sexy she was and how attractive she was and oh they want me to even acknowledge what had happened to you. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Very yeah, angry. I want, I want names. I feel like <laughs> I feel like this is where that girls come together because I feel like through various levels growing up was just crap. Mm -hmm. It's fucking traumatic. Like actually traumatic. I feel, I personally feel silly about it sometimes in therapy because I'm like, yeah, like everyone gets bullied, but like that's like a whole nother level. Right. Like I truly am sitting here because I just like, I, There's, like, no words. You know what I'm saying? It's just, like, where are the people? Well, and I think, like, in a situation like that, like, I didn't even see it as me being bullied. <laughs> yeah. I saw it as this is just the truth of the matter. Yeah. I know. And it yeah. makes it, oh. That's what, that's what makes it hurt, I think. Yeah. And, no, it makes even it hurt more, so much. Even more is that, like, you, it's in me. your mind, it's it was me. you. Yeah. And it wasn't. Yeah. Oh, God. I and like I'm. I'm telling you that, but I'm also telling little Rebecca in there that it She's wasn't her fault. <laughs> it wasn't her fault. It was not her fault. It wasn't her body. It was two shitty kids. Yeah. Three shitty kids. Three shitty kids. It was three shitty kids who, yeah, they were kids and kids do dumb shit, but it was three shitty kids. It was not, it wasn't you. Yeah. It wasn't your body. It wasn't your fault. Yeah, no, I was going to say Allie. She didn't break me, but I broke Allie. I was going to say, I think I, like, need a minute. God damn it, Rebecca. (laughs) (laughs) This was supposed to happen to you. No, I know. I, like, feel like a panic attack going on. (laughs) Like, literally. 
it's funny because I, I really do. Like sometimes it's not I'm like, funny. well, it's funny because in my mind, I think, am I making it more dramatic than it is? No, no. no. But, no. but to like share that, I feel like I am, you know, like no. you know, I minimize so much what happens to me. I minimize it and minimize well, it. Well, yeah, and minimize girl, that's it. a survival Stop tactic. Stop doing yeah. that. Like if you have any more stories like that, please get them out and please tell <laughs> right. us. Because at least like if you can't cry about it, let us cry for little Rebecca because she <laughs> suck, man. She's been through some shit. Oh, I don't know. There's more, believe me. Yeah. Well, not sexual. Well, I mean, there are sexual things, but there's <sighs> other things that I haven't shared with many people, but yeah. I do yeah. have a question surrounding all that. So we both grew up kind of like Catholic and all that. <sighs> do you think that any of like the Catholic guilt was associated with why you didn't tell anyone or talk about it? I don't know if it was necessarily the Catholic guilt, although certainly I'm really good at feeling guilt. Um, <laughs> they did that right. <laughs> you know, when I think about it, I really don't. I think it's because people didn't talk openly about their experiences. You know, like mm-hmm. I didn't whenever and not to like shame my mother, but like I don't know what experience my mom had. You know, I, her, whenever I hear things about her childhood, it just seems kind of like idyllic childhood. Like, but I know she probably went through things, you know. And my sister and I can sometimes talk about things that happen as kids, but we really don't talk about, we don't talk about those things, you know? So I think it's more so just like that, those, those kinds of things weren't up for discussion. And because we didn't talk about that kind of stuff, um, why would I share? Right. And kind of like, just keeping it in. That's, that's just normal. Keep it to myself. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, I don't really know if that was like a '90s kids thing, yeah. or if it was like a it feels a little bit thing. of like, like product of cold. the time. It feels very product yeah. of the time yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think I think no, no, it's it's not like, that I'm boring. I'm just <laughs> 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 I like really was trying to stop a pa- like oh. pausing for a second. I was like oh. trying to stop a panic attack. Oh, okay. I thought you were yawning. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. You okay? Yeah, I just took like. A deep, deep breath, breath in, okay. and then it did cause me to yawn because I'm like huffing in air. Oh, okay, okay, so okay. I was like, "No, you're not boring me. I'm just <laughs> trying to." Can we do a regulate. makeup check for everybody except for Rebecca? <laughs> you're okay. smart. You're rough. You, yeah. Oh great. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's but a little, honestly, I cried so hard. <laughs> but honestly, I like it when your makeup gets a little smudged. I can. I'm just. I'm just gonna fidget that's what i'm gonna do today am i good my rings are fidgety did you look at me and say that so i don't have my glasses well that's do you have a line you look oh a big one this tap the corner everyone could use a little corner tap like jesus for oh god (laughs) in solidarity I appreciate y'all feeling my emotions for me. Wow. You know what's funny? It's like when I do cry. You might feel it tonight, by you the way. Welcome. I might. You know what? You know what make, makes me cry? Like I'll be sitting on the toilet, <laughs> watching my morning memes <laughs> she did. of like a dog being rescued. <laughs> See, that's what I was. Someone coming home from war. Yep. That's oh when I cry. Keep that's that why I do my deep <laughs> yeah, let's belly just cries. Keep all this in. So enough about that. But speaking of bananas. <laughs> <laughs> We know that you're a big banana ball girly. Oh, <laughs> and I'm a banana ball girly. <laughs> Wait, right? maybe we could get a partnership with the banana ball. Oh my God. The banana ball. I was going to say the banana ball. I feel like the party animals would love us. I actually uh, I was going to say would. maybe we're 100%. more party animal girls. Can we just we need to get Maria a crown because she's the queen of segues. <laughs> Literally the queen of segues. Also, her questions are way better than the rest of us. 100%. I know. 100%. Thanks, ladies. Anyway, this isn't my episode. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for my... Gas me up on my episode, everybody. So, we know you're a big banana ball girly. Mm-hmm. You know, cute boy shenanigans. Who wouldn't love that? Um, but we went to a game. Mm-hmm. And it was a little rough. It especially was. for your girl. <laughs> so, as far as, like, venues go and accommodations for fat-friendly seating, like, do you have any tips or tricks or things you'd want to tell people or even like if you could dream big and be like fix it now and they'd listen mm. what would you do the only <laughs> trick is preparation and and golly I can worry way ahead of time so I'm pretty good I'm figuring out how to prepare you know I think whenever it came to um the game we went to which was at the like Durham Bulls stadium mm-hmm. um we had looked online and such and we had talked about calling and we never called yeah <laughs> um and when we got there their accommodating seating really was just spaces for people that needed maybe like they had like a wheelchair or something and then they'd have a couple 
seats, but the pull up seats they had were all metal with little chair, like little metal chairs with with armrests. So accommodating really what they would see as able bodies with people that would need, sure. you know. And so, um, quite frankly, we lucked out in the fact that yeah. we were able to get one chair that didn't have armrests. I think this year, because this year we're planning to go to four games, right? Like we're up yeah. in our level of banana dumb. <laughs> um, I absolutely am going to look up all the rules of the chairs, but I'm calling each stadium personally. And I'm going to say we have this specific need and this specific accommodation request. What will that look like? And, you know, I believe it is their job to accommodate. Now, if they are like, well, we'll allow y'all to bring chairs cool we got chairs yeah i got chairs but i am going to say we have this specific need how will you be able to accommodate us and um i'm going to position it back on them and see what the response is so that's my hope like the goal is their goal should be to be able to have their guests so what are you doing to make sure that you are accommodating your guests now i mean one thing that i'm thinking about is we are as a group going to go to a game right mm -hmm. and so that means it needs to be more than one chair yeah Mm -hmm. The combination can't be there's one singular yeah. chair that can handle yeah. it, right? Yeah. And um that I had to fight for. Yeah. Off of the literal baseball stadium. Like it was literally just out in the field and I was like, somebody needs to bring me that. Yeah. <laughs> um so And they did. <laughs> so that is a conversation to have. And you know what's funny is when we went to the banana game, did I see multiple people that were like standing because they couldn't sit and like yeah. we're not the only ones that need it. They gotta think ahead. So yeah, I think like dream accommodations would be a different types of chairs allowed like i don't besides like the view which is my guess for concerts of why they want the low slung chairs the amount of people that can't get that low older people people in big bodies people with bad knees any of that kind of stuff why could there be a section for higher up chairs and a section for lower chairs you know like if someone wanted to damage someone with a chair whether it's low or high they're still gonna be able to damage someone with a chair could there <laughs> like, be a section with just bleachers yeah like Ooh. there needs to be my best thing for any venue, any there needs to be multiple seat types. Restaurants, there needs to be multiple seat types. I was just going to ask you that question, like yeah. to piggyback on her question. Mm -hmm. um, like if you if you could like just do like an an all call to like all <laughs> like venues, restaurants, I really like, what would you say as far as accessibility goes? Because I know there's also people who are just like, well, just lose weight. And then oh, you yeah, can yeah. sit wherever you want. What would you say? I would say you need to have flexible seating. Um, and that means like different types of seats, bench style seat, seats with armrests, seats without armrests. When you have a booth, the table needs to be able to move. Um, if you can have an end booth where the end booth isn't built into the ground and the end booth yeah. can move mm, yeah all of that stuff can make it easier oh and if you have an outdoor patio area you better have some flexible seating there too because Those still have chairs. still have it's always a little garden like little chair with the arm i mean it's every single time they're awful um can we talk about wedding chairs mm. can we talk about those damn wedding chairs yeah the ones the, the that you're ones perching that fold and you're just that hoping. You're holding on your legs wind up hurting at the end of the night because you've been just holding yeah. on for dear life <laughs> yeah and it's amazing to me how many restaurant chairs in like charlotte they'll do multiple restaurants and they never fix their seating um i'm like you've opened now four restaurants with those tiny metal chairs yeah yeah you know um, who you are and you have still chosen to not accommodate other types of bodies. And again, when you accommodate one person's needs, it's usually accommodating a lot more people's needs. Yeah. yeah. Not Flex only that, up, but if people are comfortable, they pay. Yeah. And they're going to come more often. Right. Because they're going to keep mm -hmm. showing up. They're going to find their favorites. They're going to want to try more And if more you things. believe the assumption that fat girls just order the whole menu, don't you want us to be there? <laughs> <laughs> like if the assumption is we're gonna get if the assumption is we're gonna get a starter, a meal, a salad, a dessert, some drinks. Maybe not the salad. Get us some down. <laughs> Invite us. Like that means our bill is some seats. There's room for all food. Yes. <laughs> but like, damn, like if the assumption is we're gonna eat more, you should want us. Yeah. Get us some comfortable seats, man. Yeah. I kinda wanna keep it rolling in like some fun lighter topics I, okay. I don't know why but just, just, just broke have a feeling <laughs> you, did, you broke um, us we were trying to break you and you broke all of us <laughs> i sobbed yeah i literally have tricky. a fire water bottle <laughs> <laughs> so getting into another fun one you and i have a shared love of reality tv mm -hmm. um especially the competition ones mm -hmm. if you could go on any one which would it be okay 
I love Big Brother most. Yeah. And mm. I think it's possible that I would have a breakdown on Big Brother <laughs> because you are locked in a home mm. with other people and you only get to go outside on certain days mm -hmm. and it is the same people for 90 days. And you, and you vote people off. Sometimes it's a hundred days. Know, days yeah, and works. you vote people off. Um, so like Big Brother's watching, you're 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 always on film, so you don't get you do not get a break. There's not a time where you're unmiked. You're nothing. with these people for three months. And you're yes. voting them off. And you're strategizing with them. And you need to sell yourself to them. And you need to make but not sell yourself too much because then they might want to I would get voted off first. Even I, the bathroom I know this about has myself. a camera. Yeah. Um You can't poop in peace. Nope. No. This is not. At least you would see Rebecca cry. There you go. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> There's no cell phones. There's no books. This is for the me, only babe. book they have in there is you can get a holy text. I would be whispering. I would under get the door. a holy text. Yeah, I would yes. actually request all the holy text. I'd be like, my time to read. Let me just go through right. all. Of them. I would be whispering like, under the door the at Rebecca, like think about the soldiers. <laughs> think about the puppies. Think about the puppies. <laughs> Do it for the puppies. Yeah, I would think about my puppy in a year. But, um, <laughs> but it also is so silly and fun. But I think I have a strategy, which is don't, don't give it away. Don't give. We're gonna get you on Big I mean, Brother. Okay, give us a little. <laughs> on here a little at least. Big Brother's really not meant for bigger bodies. Yeah. They do not build their sets for bigger Be bodies. Better. Yeah. Um. But like, uh, as a bigger person, you are seen as the sidekick. And I will play up that fucking sidekick role yes. so fast. She looks I'm the sidekick right now. <laughs> like, let me amp you mm -hmm. up. Ooh, tell me your secrets. I'm juicy with you. Yeah, I think the exact same thing as you. I'm your fat funny friend. You just I think believed her, didn't you? The exact same thing as you. But actually. you actually do. And you're the amazing. And I think you should Thanks, do it right. Man. And I, they just don't see you the way that I see you. <laughs> I feel manipulated, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would hope that when they did the quiz comps, I could you pull just, out a yeah. win at some point. I'd want to play the middle. I'd want for people to feel like they can rely on me for my vote. But you'd be the fat girl, so you wouldn't be you wouldn't be intimidating to everyone. So you could totally do this. Yeah. And um and I want them to think that potentially I'm a little bit of a goat that they want to bring to the end because they could win against. Because who's gonna vote for the fat girl? And then I want to do a major act of betrayal at the end. Yes. And be like, this is my game. I'm Just the main not character. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I love. Okay, that. Big Brother, <laughs> call us. Oh. We got a contestant for we you. Got so we have several contestants. She just gave away her I love you. Too, so Don't call us <laughs> if you do the ledge competition. Yeah, don't, we got butts. Yeah, don't our ledge needs to be farther from the wall. Yes. Not only that, but when you inevitably give your interview and you're talking about, you know, how you're gonna really hold on there. Don't do that bit where you cut right to that part and, and then, then falling, of her falling and immediately then like, and like, then they're like, boom, boom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't, don't do that. I don't, I don't even know what this is, but Same. I feel like I can envision it. <laughs> no idea. They'll they'll be like, I'm gonna really pull it on this one, and then they'll put me falling off the wall, and it'll be like immediately. Yeah. They'll feel my butt getting up off the ground like. <laughs> 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 It's humiliation all the oh way through. God. And then they'll repeat it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have a question. <laughs> Rebecca, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of your personal style. Mm -hmm. um, I just like, I love the way that you More dress. Hair. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the way that you dress. And um, I know that for both me and, and for Maria, um, you were one of the first like plus size influencers, bloggers that I started following. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I that, your, that your style <laughs> has evolved over the years, um, but I've just always loved your style. Thank you. What, what would, what do you think that your style says about you? Or what do you want your style to say about you? Hmm. Um, I think I hope my style shows confidence and very much like womanly. I, I am more feminine, but not like I don't know what they call high femme. Like I'm not girly. Yeah. But I do feel like I want to be like a sophisticated woman. You are very sophisticated. You're hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i i always say like intelligent style like i i'm a little bit geeky nerdy showing i but like still a little bit sexy i love that and one of the things i did i did actually find hard in the space is i don't feel like my style is very niche like i don't feel like i have a singular aesthetic and so then when like people would describe each other's aesthetics it's again feeling of visibility and this is something that's happened it's like they're like oh you're like cool y2k girly and you're the sex pot 
and you you go from like vintage pinup to emo girl. So I don't know. You go. You you have some different specs. That's so funny. So I would just say unicorn. sparkle. Yeah. I was just gonna say sparkle. Yeah, like, you, you have some different kinds of looks, right? Like right now, I'm like a little more pinupy girl to me. Yeah, but the sparkles are always are still consistent, there. always. And then it's like, but what would you say about me? And I feel like a lot of times people don't have that description. And then I'm I, like, you're the I, chic one. You're like chic, chic as fuck. Terracotta chic. You did yes. one time say like Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Terracotta chic. I love yeah. that. Wait. Oh my God. Rebecca. A little earthy. Earthy. Chic. A little earthy. Hashtag meat city. Terracotta yes, chic. You heard it here first. City. Rebecca's a trendsetter. Like I feel Arizona. I feel the desert. I can feel the heat on my body. Because I love like Sienna colors. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Wait. No, you are chic as fuck. I love your style. Wait a minute. Same. We just figured it out. So you're welcome. I like that she called me a sex pot. <laughs> I, like that, I like that I confused her. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm like, you got tricks, girl. You can pull out a kind of look at one day with a chameleon. Yeah. Oh, chameleon. So the way we ended Allie's episode was kind of going around and saying mm -hmm. one thing that we hope viewers and listeners like take away and know about Rebecca. So, you know, Rebecca, I really hope that through this episode and through the content we continue to put out that people just start to see how like genuine you are i i'm a cold-hearted bitch don't you forget <laughs> no, i don't not. think you are cold-hearted no. at all not at all <laughs> i think i think you're low-key so much fun but maybe not even that low-key not at all i think she's high-key so much fun mm -hmm. High key. Well, I think that if I had anything that I wanted people to take away from this episode, I want people to know how fucking profound you are. I think that you are so profound. And I think that you are just, like I said, I think that you're so self-aware. And I know that that's painful sometimes. I think that you're so self-aware. I think that you're so profound. You're so, you're just so eloquent, so beautifully spoken. I just, everything that comes out of your mouth, I just like it. I just hang on every word. I'm just like gushing over you right now. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I do. And I, there, you just, you ooze confidence in a way that is like the least arrogant and least presumptuous way possible. And it's just like, it's just incredible to me. I want everybody to know that. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. My little surprising thing I learned was that you do this thing where you minimize your pain for the sake of others mm. <laughs> and like try and think that like yours isn't as big, so it shouldn't matter. It's not as important. And I just want you to know it, it matters. It's important. You matter. You're important. Mm -hmm. You were really anxious coming into this episode mm -hmm. and and I am proud of you. You got really vulnerable yeah. and you shared a lot about a lot. yourself. Yeah. A lot about yourself. You know, and I've said this once and I've said it again, like y'all enable me to have conversations I haven't had, you know, and I think part of it is your personalities, but part of it truly is carving out a space to have them, right? Because yeah, I can say I trust people all day, but if we don't talk about serious things, because I again, like I'm so close to my sister, we just don't talk about these things, right? We don't have a space for them. We talk about other things and we love and connect on that stuff. But to actually have a space where you get to bring those forward. Like it's, it's not only that it's safe to, but like, no, we dedicated this time to connect this way, to have these moments, to share these things that we've held in and we've just grown through and acted in whatever way we felt we could. Um, I prize it. So thank you. Well, we're, f we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're fat. <laughs> We're fab. We're four. <laughs> and we will see you next time. Yep. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>